Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today in this video we're going to talk about how to edit a portrait photography in Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro but again I remind you that this is not just about a video of Silky Peaks Developer Studio Pro but in general in terms of portrait photography because many of the tools generally should be available in other editing software so if you find any similar tools you apply the same tools and you should have exact same results so let's jump into it uh, today particularly in this video i decided not to show my face generally you get to see my face uh, not in this video because i i did not shave because i was really busy my in-laws are in the house so you know family responsibility can be very tiring i love them because my wife is watching this video um I, I do really do actually i really do anyway let's jump right in so i've got this uh, photo taken with a nikon i believe d5500 with the kit lens not kit lens it's a prime lens of 35 mm 1.8 g now ideally uh you can do many things with this type of photograph because you know it depends on what you want for your own photo so i'm gonna take a approach of my own um as you know that i usually uh, start with um the lens correction so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna go to nikon 35 mm f 1.g and if you don't find your lens i recommend you to go to the lens separation controller and then jump right into the lens profile click ok and then look at the list of the manufacturer and then go from there you should have you shouldn't have any problem with silky Peaks developer studio pro because they have pretty much all the lens profiles so that's pretty good other thing that i recommend you to do like if you are taking photo in the high contrast area such as this for example this one you have like a bright sky pretty boring uh, in this case turn on the chromatic aberration because it depends on the lens um if the lens is not really good when i say not good let's say it doesn't have any one of those uh, modern coating it tend to give you a chromatic aberration that might make your photo look a little bit less appealing so i turn this one on uh everything else it depends photo per photo like i turn the distortion on but then again i use the lens profile so it should do the job so i'm done with my lens correction followed by what i would like to do i would go straight to the white balance so i'm going to turn the white balance and then it's already good because the blown out sky is actually white so that gives you a pure white area but if you are confused you should have accurate white balance using any of those auto like uh, let's say i'm gonna go with the absolute what happens with that it generally makes the lower midtone and the highlight completely white or linear see that they all um three different channels mixed into one and then it became uh, white so that's the white balance that is doing everything else don't really worry but feel free to pay, play with them because more you play what happens is that you might find some color that you might like so play with the slider uh if you are curious i'm gonna go to the color so in color uh interestingly i'm gonna go to instead of neutral i'm gonna go to faithful now faithful if you look at my blog inside the description uh, in my blog i wrote that faithful is generally the most uh neutral color profile of silky Peaks developer Studio pro it tends to protect your color while working on luminance uh, the reason why i'm doing that because i already have a blown out sky so if i work with the luminance it might help with my subject but problem is that background is already bright enough so i don't want to affect it too much and then what else i should do i'm going to go to the color representation and then go to the film version 2 the reason behind it i'm going to uh, scroll so if i start from the memory color and then scroll down you can see the change in color right film color version 2 tend to make the hair and the skin look a bit more you know the reddish which is amazing for that type of subjects you know what i mean so i'm going to zoom in quite a bit let's let's just zoom in a little bit you know what i mean because our main subjects here are the skin tone so only skin i have here are her hand right here and the face and the hair everything else are covered with the clothing so make sure that the skin stands out looks nice and beautiful and calming right so i'm gonna pull down just there so that even for me i get to see it properly so i'm done with the color profile fixing part then i'm gonna go to the exposure and what i'm going to do i'm going to make sure the highlight is minus 80 
The reason behind it, because as you can see, the sky is quite blown out. So I'm going to turn down just a little bit. And then in I'm going to stay in the HDR. I'm going to just put it down there. Make sure that it's on the side. There you go. That looks about right. Uh, in HDR, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add like say 30. You know, there's no specific rule. The rule is essentially every time you move a slider, you keep an eye on the histogram. Pay attention to the photo itself because the problem is if you don't pay attention to the photo it you know you might don't see what's going on and then at the end of the edit you might find problems so pay attention to the photo and the histogram at the same time while you're making any change now i'm going to go to the tone curve right there on the left this is where all the magic happens ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna tell you why okay before i do that i should go to the tone right there and then reduce that contrast center to just about 38 i said 36 and 38 should be fine gamma what i should do maybe i could add about 1.70 so let's see um so ideally the the objective here is to make sure that the subject is standing out because let's say this is a crop version of it so you want to crop it let's say you have done it what if you want to keep the whole photo just like that you know what i mean so you want to make sure that the subject is standing out from the background and everything is nice and well exposed. And it's not just about the exposure because it's a portrait photography. So your subject is the queen or king here. And also you need to remember that the photograph, you don't know where you're going to publish it. If you're in a smaller skin, let's say in a tiny itty bitty tiny skin in your smartphone or if you're printing it for album i mean for both case you should make sure that the subject are well exposed or more exposed than everything else surrounding so anyway enough about the exposure and jibber jabber you got the idea now moving on to is there any, oh generally in the portrait photography specifically in the portrait photography 80 percent of the time i tend to reduce the clarity very little nothing aggressive here just a touch the idea is that because if you add clarity too much uh, the photo looks extremely ugly it it's nice for landscape or architectural photography or high key black and white but for the portrait you want to have like a really nice calming look you know what i mean so in that case i recommend you to reduce the clarity just a soft touch Right, so I've done uh, my lens correction, color, exposure, uh, highlight, um, tone. Now I'm going to go to the partial correction. I'm going to try to add a little bit of uh, vignette and also I'm going to work on her face. I'm just going to expose her face a, just a little bit more. You know what I mean, at this point, this was not planning. I'm just going to give it a go and let's see if it's working. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the polygon and then add a nice and round polygon around her. double click and make sure you invert so what happened is that is going opposite direction and then try to add some uh, feather and then once you're done now you can actually work on adjusting it now i'm going to reduce the lightness very softly you know really really softly and then I'm going to go to the blur and add a bit more blur. As you can clearly see that the background is already quite blurry anyway. But, you know, and a little bit adding a little bit more blur wouldn't hurt. So I'm going to do that. So step number one is done. Now I'm going to go back to this area right here. I don't know what it calls though. It calls color and contrast. All right. Now turn on brush. And I'm going to zoom in again just uh, quite significantly. Make sure that the, her face is quite um, well exposed and uh, my brush is right in the zone. Now, I'm going to add some feather. I think it's already enough. And then do a little brush, not too much, just a circle. And then release it. And what you can do, you can just add a soft, more brightness right there. So if you can look at before and after, let me show you. That's before. And that's after you can see a significant change guys right and the second one is that you add another brush but this time objective is very different so I'm gonna desaturate her face a little bit not too much though a little bit so what I'm going to do I'm going to reduce the lightness again 
go to the color where is it there so and then bring the tool drop the tool on our face and then reduce saturation just a little bit because i'm going to work on color later and it's going to affect her i'm trying to be in the safe zone so that if i add color it doesn't over saturate her face you got the idea now and what i can do i can add some lightness on our skin tone so again it stands out quite a bit you see it is nice and bright and vibrant i like i believe the partial correction is done and before i move on to the curve the most important part i'm gonna zoom out a little bit and add a crop so just gonna cut a little bit not too much just there because i think there is way too much empty space I can get rid of it. It could actually, I could actually do the same thing like right here, but I think that as a portrait, um, it looks phenomenal. I like it. I'm a big fan. 50% is done. Actually, more than 50%. Now you're going to go to the curve, and this is where all the magic happens, ladies and gentlemen. Let me show you why, because I'm very excited now. So you go to the red, you change your curve to red curve. That is extremely important. And then we're going to pull the lower mid-tone down just like that and pull it up just a little bit in the upper mid-tone and you go all the way to the 255 click it and pull it down let's say you should stop at 200 and about 211 is fine right there you can see the number input and output you see what happened it made the photo a bit more green right so and then i'm going to do the same thing with green but before i do that what i'm going to do i think i could actually pull up the upper mid tone quite a bit just give it a go like that because ideally what i want i don't want the the upper mid tone completely green i want a little bit of uh, red as you can see in the histogram so now again uh, i'm going to go to the green and then i will pull down just a little bit this time not too much though again not too much pull down 255 just a little bit down Listen, if you are getting confused like what I'm doing, pay attention to the number at the bottom in this section. This is important. And if you like, um, write it down or save this video for later and then follow exact number. You can actually type the numbers and that should give you exact same result. Add just in the middle like that. See that the photo changed significantly. <clears throat> and then the last thing I want to do, I'm going to go to the blue curve and do pretty much exactly the same. I will pull down somewhere nearby, like that, and pull down just like that, the lower mid-tone, and pull it up just about there. Clearly, the photo looks like one of those Kodachrome uh, filter, right? Which is amazing. I'm very excited about it. And it's not done yet. I'm gonna go to the RGB. In the RGB, I'm gonna create a nice s curb. so like that and pull down the highlight there you go the, um, and the luminance right in the middle you pull up just a notch so what i'm going to do i'm going to wait a little bit to let the photo render and once i'm done once i'm done guys i'm going to go to the portrait beautification and add like about five effect value of five and i'm going to zoom in and then take a look at her uh, face a little bit for example there you go as you can clearly see the photo looks phenomenal it looks really old school magazine photo this is amazing my goodness i mean i'm very proud of this edit sharpening and noise reduction and the, uh, the iso here is uh, 500 so noise reduction shouldn't be too much because i don't really care about the noise here because noise looks pretty awesome um, I'm going to just click default, let the Silky Beats developer decide on its own. So uh, it's basically an automatic noise reduction and sharpening. And go to the no Demosaic sharpening and add 78 as per recommendation of Silky Peaks developer studio pro. Now, wait a little bit, just a little. I'm going to zoom out slowly. And once I'm done, I'm going to go to export. So. In the export add artistic portrait then make sure that i'm in the right folder i want to reduce the export sharpening to web file i put is silky Pix default that's fine because it's just for the tutorial purpose then i'm going to go back to the saved file 
select my folder and then click develop. I'm going to open the double screen, shut everything down so that I have more space to take a look. I want to reset my initial edit. Take a look guys. I'm going to zoom in just a little. I'm just going to show you around what's happening. As you can clearly see the photo looks extremely artistic the person in the photo is is beautiful uh, she has a really nice posture which is very important in photography especially in the portrait photography you cannot do much in edit all the planning goes before you press the shutter button so you have to uh, keep that in mind but other than that the edit makes the photo look even beautiful clearly amazing the skin doesn't look oversaturated i brought back all the skin tones it looks nice and sharp yet soft enough for the portrait photography and i'm going to zoom out this is how you can edit a very artistic portrait photography i highly recommend you to give it a go play with your curve and it can create some amazing art so if you like this video like and subscribe and i see you in the next video bye bye